In our last video, we examined the dimension of the null space of a matrix. We found a basis for the null space and also the dimension of the null space. We're going to do something similar in this example, except we're going to be examining a different subspace of a matrix. In this case, we're going to be finding the column space basis and dimension. So here is the matrix A that we'll be working with in this example. And our goal is to find a um, basis and dimension of what we call the column space of the matrix. So the column space is pretty um, easy to understand. It's basically just where can you go by taking linear combinations of columns. So if all of these columns were independent, we would need all five of them, and we would say it's a five-dimensional subspace. If there's only one linear in independent vec column up here, we just need one of them to go to anywhere in the column space, and we would say it's a one-dimensional column space. Obviously, since this matrix has four rows and five columns, the largest dimension that the column space could be would be four, right? Because if I have length four vectors, at most I can have four linearly independent vectors. So we know it's not going to be a five-dimensional column space. At most it will be four. But what we need to do is go ahead and find a basis for that column space and then find the dimension. So how are we going to do that? Again, it comes down as a first step, just like before, to doing some row operations. So let's do some row operations to get A into a reduced echelon form. In the previous video on this playlist, we went through most of those computations. I'm not going to do that here. We have, we've done that enough times in this playlist of videos. If you do the row operations, you will end up with A being row equivalent. That's what this tilde means right here. It's row equivalent to this matrix right here. So if you do the row reductions, you'll end up with this. And then identifying which, how many columns are linearly independent is pretty easy. You just need to examine the pivot points. And here we see that there are two pivots. There's a pivot in column one, and there is a pivot in column two. So that information tells me right there that I only have two linearly independent columns, or two, two linearly independent columns, and I can go ahead and grab those by grabbing columns one and two of the original matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this column right here and this column right here because they are linearly independent. Now that I've grabbed those two columns, those columns form a basis for the column space of A. These other columns are linear combinations in some way of these first two, so we don't need them. They're, they're not needed in finding the column space, all I need are these two linearly independent columns. These are dependent on these. So columns one and two of this original matrix are a basis for the column space. So I can go ahead and write those down. Three, negative three, five, seven, zero, one, four, six. So that these form the basis for my column space. Since I know the basis now, finding the dimension of the column space is almost trivial. It has two vectors in the basis, so it is a two-dimensional subspace. So the dimension of the column space of A is 2.